anger, resentment, hatred, jealousy, anxiety, lashing out at other people. Humans have been violent and angry for as long as our species has walked this planet, right? But do you get the sense that things have gotten worse and that these kinds of negative emotions seem to dominate even in what should be regarded as relatively minor circumstances, like minor work frustration, road rage, irritation at some perceived slight from a coworker or a family member? Well, let me tell you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that people who have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is incredibly common today, because you and I swim in a sea of factors that have caused or worsened this situation. It could have been several courses of antibiotics. It could have been non-antibiotic pharmaceuticals. It's become clear that many pharmaceutical agents that are not labeled antibiotics have antibiotic properties and specifically kill off beneficial microbes, but don't kill off unhealthy microbes, the so-called gram-negative species. Other factors, preservatives and other food additives like emulsifying agents, chlorinated drinking water. In other words, you and I are inundated with factors that disrupt the composition of the gastrointestinal microbiome, and by the way, other microbiomes in other parts of the body. But today, I'm mostly concerned with the gastrointestinal microbiome because it's that collection of microbes that seems to have an outsized role on your emotions. Now, I don't think this conversation gets enough attention. There's a very interesting series of studies performed in Germany that I'm still amazed were performed. And it came from a group who asked this question, why do many people not respond to the SSRI antidepressant drugs? So someone can be prescribed these drugs they don't respond, they're still depressed over several weeks, they come back to the doctor's office, the dose is increased. Another several weeks, they're still depressed, they come back to the office, dose is increased again, they still don't respond. The first drug is replaced by a second drug and the same process repeats itself. This could go on for many months and the person is depressed all along and even at risk for suicide or doing other bad things. So we all know that the conventional treatments for, anti for depression are inadequate, are very poor. Sometimes they work, they often do not. Well, this German group asked this question. Is there something unique about the people who don't respond to these conventional SSRI drugs? Well, it's been clear, not just this group, but other groups have shown that people who have a higher inflammatory state, as indicated by various measures of inflammation, like C-reactive protein and others, are the ones who are less likely to respond to antidepressants. So this one German group asked, could that higher level of inflammation that made these people have unresponsive depression be due to endotoxemia? That is the entry of bacterial breakdown products, but specifically from a class of microbes called gram-negative or proteobacteria. These are bacteria that you recognize as E. coli or salmonella or campylobacter, typically fecal microbial species that have what's called gram-negative staining properties when you try to look at them under a microscope. But they have a very specific component in their cell walls called lipopolysaccharide endotoxin. So when you have an overabundance of these microbes, these gram-negative proteobacteria in the small intestine in particular, because the small intestine is quite permeable. By design, that's where you absorb nutrients, but when these gram-negative proteobacteria, these fecal microbes, come to inhabit the small intestine, they live and die very rapidly. They only live for a few hours at most. They release their toxic components, like this lipopolysaccharide endotoxemia, into the bloodstream. That's called endotoxemia. So this German group asked, well, what if we took normal, non-depressed people and injected them with lipopolysaccharide endotoxin. <laughs> I'm amazed by this because a slight miscalculation on the minuscule doses, we're talking about nanogram or picogram quantities, very tiny quantities, and if there's a miscalculation, you could do real harm to somebody, including killing them. And so this, nonetheless, this group did these series of studies injecting normal, non-depressed people with endotoxin, lipopolysaccharide endotoxin. Lo and behold, these people became clinically depressed within hours of receiving the injection. And they did MRI scans of the brain, 
and the brain scan showed all the hallmarks of depression. So in other words, it suggests that a higher level of lipopolysaccharide endotoxin in the bloodstream can be responsible for a form of depression. What I'm seeing in real life is lots and lots of people who are very frustrated, angry, lashing out at family members and co-workers, having a hard time getting along at work or in school, having a hard time paying attention, struggling with anxiety or depression or disrupted sleep or nightmares, all the negative emotions that humans are subject to. I'm seeing them test positive for endotoxemia. There's a number of ways to do that, um, but one way would be to do hydrogen breath testing. We use something called the AIR device, A-I-R-E, from the company Food Marble. I have no relationship with them. It's one way to, to map out where microbes are living in your gastrointestinal tract, because in order for this process to occur, you want to know if there are microbes, those fecal microbes, those gram-negative proteobacteria living in the small intestine. It sounds very complicated, but it's actually quite simple. If you want the protocol, it's in my super gut book. It's also in my blog, my WilliamDavisMD.com blog, and it tells you how to use this device to map out where microbes are living. Because if they're living in the small intestine, thereby allowing release of endotoxin in your bloodstream, that could be a driver of these negative emotions. But even better, what I'm seeing is people eradicate this process using beneficial microbes. And I'm seeing these emotions reverse quite rapidly. So if you're having intense frustration over something that shouldn't really bother you that much, or great anxiety over silly little things like maybe having to go to an office party, or deal with some neighbors, or something that's part of everyday life, and you seem to have an emotional reaction that's out of proportion to the situation, think about this process. So what I'm seeing is people are cultivating beneficial microbes, but specifically microbes that have two basic properties. They colonize the small intestine and colon, because the small intestine is where this occurs largely. And they also produce what are called bactericins. These are natural antibiotics effective in killing those gram-negative proteobacteria. Now, in the original formulation, original recipe, we co-fermented three microbes. It was lactobacillus roteri, lactobacillus gastri, and bacillus coagulans. Because they had those properties, we co-fermented them for a long period, 36 hours, at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, human body temperature, and it worked quite well. Now, I've recently improved the recipe by replacing the bacillus coagulans with bacillus subtilis, because the coagulants was not the most reliable in getting high numbers of microbes in fermentation. So I replaced it with Bacillus subtilis, which is more reliable. And it's also an excellent producer of those bactericins. You have a choice. You can co-ferment all three, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 36 hours, or you can ferment them individually. If you really have bad SIBO and a lot of emotional struggles, I would prefer that you, it's more work, but individually ferment them. And the reason for that is you get higher counts. We want to aim for about 300 billion microbes per half cup or 120 milliliter serving if you co-ferment all three. But if you individually ferment, or maybe do two and one, something like that, you get higher counts, you get bigger effects, and you consume for four weeks. But what I'm seeing happen is people who are experiencing these negative emotions have fairly rapid relief. And I think what's happening is we're seeing a marked drop in endotoxemia. It's a tough thing to prove because the measurement for endotoxemia, that is a blood level of lipopolysaccharide, is not clinically available. It's, it's available for research purposes, but not, it's not clinically available. You can't go to the lab and say, I'd like to have a serum lipopolysaccharide level. They, they won't do it. So we, it's kind of presumptive, but you can indirectly prove it by seeing if your breath hydrogen gas using the air device or the same test in a lab or clinic normalizes after four weeks of this yogurt or combination of yogurts. One odd twist is because you're getting lactobacillus roteri in the mixture, lactobacillus roteri will cause a positive H2 measurement. So you have to stop it for two weeks before you test again. I wish it wasn't that way, but that's just how it is. But I'm seeing dramatic effects 
unemotional reactions. That is the frustration, the anger, the outburst, anxiety. I'm seeing a lot of that improve dramatically and it can be quite palpable. I've been impressed with how powerful this is. So if you feel you're experiencing or someone close to you is experiencing these kinds of negative emotions, especially if they seem to be out of proportion to the situation, think about whether endotoxemia and SIBO is driving that process. Now, this kind of information interests you. I encourage you to take a look at all my materials, my super gut book, of course, my other books, my blog with thousands of posts, WilliamDavisMD.com. And if you'd like some guidance, some hand holding through this process, I encourage you to join my conversations, which we have most weeks for a couple of hours, which is the InnerCircle.DrDavisInfiniteHealth.com.